What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. This is five things that we've learned from Chelsea Free, Southampton Free. And I don't know about you guys, but there is plenty to talk about after this game. It felt like another collapse. It was more points dropped from winning positions that we really should have maintained onto. And there's plenty of problems, plenty of issues, and plenty of questions to discuss in this video. So we're going to go straight into it. But before we start this video, as usual, smash that like button and hit that subscribe button. If you haven't done so already, it would be the highlight of my weekend because yesterday was just depressing. Hit that like and subscribe button, press the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever, whenever any new content gets released on this channel. And yeah, let's just go straight into this video. Right, so Chelsea 3, Southampton 3. More points dropped because of silly individual mistakes from the defenders. Kurt Zuma and Andreas Christensen both looked like they'd ripped a bong together pre-match. Kepa was, as usual, his useless self behind the sticks. But it's really getting to a point now where I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, is this individual mistakes now or is this a deeper issue with the manager and his tactics? Um, before I start this video, I am not saying Lampard out. Nowhere in this video are you going to hear me say that I am Lampard out. But questions have to be asked. Serious questions do have to be asked now because we're, we're making the same mistakes again and again and again. And you know what the definition of insanity is. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. I'm going to go through a few stats now. 99 goals conceded in 62 games since Lampard joined as Chelsea manager. And since then, only Southampton, Aston Villa, West Ham and Brighton have conceded more goals in the Premier League than us. That is poor company, man. And I have I respect how last season went and all the other varying reasons for why we were so poor in certain areas with no transfer ban, no Eden Hazard, no Kante. But we look the same right now and we've had an extra £200 million worth of transfers. And questions do need to be asked because... Yeah, there is individual mistakes. There are players that are falling asleep in vital moments and it's costing us. We also have an absolute hologram in goal who keeps making mistake after mistake after mistake. But are we pushing individual mistakes onto ourselves by the way that we play? That's what I think we're starting to do and that's why this is becoming more of a tactical problem. I mean, we look at some of the pressing. We tried pressing high up the midfield but there was nobody sitting back which meant that there was a massive hole in front of our defence. And this meant that if Southampton could beat the press, it left the defence vulnerable to a counter. And it meant that they could play long balls forward from defence knowing that there was just a massive gap in front of them where they could stick a bunch of Southampton players in the midfield. And it also meant that we lost most of our second balls, we lost most of our transitional passes because we didn't have our players in the right places. We don't press like a team. We don't defend like a team. And this is the same problems that we're seeing from last season. This looks like a tactical move as well. Because it's both Kante and Jorginho pressing at the exact same time. Leaving the defence exposed. And this didn't change throughout the match. And this isn't the only time we've seen this as well. Which is making me think that this is a tactical issue. This is, again, not me saying Lampard out. Because I've said from the first time that he joined. He is a growing manager. We are going to have to grow with the manager as well. The manager is going to make mistakes. We just need to continue to trust him. It's not a case where he's Unai Emery or something. He's just completely making the same baffling mistakes and taking the club backwards. I don't think Lampard's taking the club backwards, but same way I think there are holes in his game that he does need to improve on. Second talking point I want to go into, and this is about Kepa, and this isn't even more of a talking point. This is just a point I want to put out. Stop playing this guy. Simply put, stop playing this guy because we can talk as much as we want to about the poor defensive work, the poor tactics, the poor pressing, the poor mentality that we've seen at sides in the squad. Fact is, we have a hologram in the back of the net who keeps making mistakes every single game. I'm not blaming the first goal for him. That was more Kai Havertz and Andreas Christensen falling asleep and failing to close down gaps. The second goal though, I mean, first off, take Kurt Zuma's ridiculous back pass aside. Kepa is still the main reason for why we concede this goal. I'm going to put the frames of it up right now. Zuma's ridiculous back pass aside, if Kepa gets a leg on that ball, because it's going at minimal speed anyway, it's just going to rebound straight back to Kurt Zuma to clear. Or it's going to be taken away from goal either, and that gives the defence more time to come back. What does this guy do? The ball's going at, what, two miles an hour, and it still goes underneath his foot. And then Che Adams tries to have a shot from the byline which hits the post. Which means now it's not a back pass and he can, and he can catch it. And what does this Walad do? He tries to slide tackle it. 
Does he think he's a defender or something? No, I'm sorry. I'm finished with this guy because he keeps making stupid mistakes game in and game out. I don't know if them aliens from Space Jam came out of nowhere and took this guy's abilities at the end of 1819, but this is not the same keeper that we're seeing. Regardless of any other varying factors for why we drew this game, Kepa tax is the biggest reason why, and it keeps costing us game in and game out. I don't care, play Willie in goal if you have to. Put Pet a check out of retirement and put him back between the sticks if you have to. Hell, go Lily Wreck and do goalkeeper trials if you have to and get someone semi-decent. But we need someone with confidence behind the sticks. Because the one thing that's going to worry those defenders more and make them, make them do more individual mistakes is a goalkeeper that they can't trust. And I'm sorry, nobody trusts Kepa anymore. Third point I want to make. Is this is about Thiago Silva. Why didn't Thiago Silva play in this match or even feature in the squad? Now, I know he came back from international duty a day before the game and people are saying that's why he wasn't eligible to be able to start and that's why he weren't featured in the squad. No, I I'm sorry, I don't want to hear that. Firmino was in the squad, Richarlison was in the squad, Edison, Fabinho, Tellez all got back at around the same time and they were all featured for their squads today. So I don't know why Thiago Silva didn't start. People are going to say, yeah, he's 36 and everything. He's on the wrong side of 35 and he's aging. Sorry, this argument does not work with Thiago Silva. The guy's pre and, po and post-match routines are mimicking Cristiano Ronaldo's. The guy takes care of his body to the same extent that Ronaldo does. And that's why, that's part of the reason why we signed him. Because the guy does not play like a 36-year-old. He's not aging. He's not walking around on a Zimmer frame or nothing like that. He is still a professional athlete. There's no reason why he couldn't have been on the squad for this game. I don't know if it was Lampard who just thought better of it or anything like that. But there would have been no harm leaving him on the bench, even bringing him on in the second half. Because one thing we needed was discipline and leadership in that back line. And those are two things that Thiago Silva brings to the squad. Crystal Palace, the last game we had before the international break, it was the most solid result of the season. So in my opinion, the minimal should have changed. The bare minimum, if anything. What happened? Hudson Doy was out of the lineup. Thiago Silva was out of the lineup. And Thiago Silva was brought back in. I get the Mendy injury, so I understand bringing Kepa back into the lineup. But we should have kept as much the same as we possibly could have. Only change we really should have had was just putting Timo Werner up front because we saw the effects of that. Other than that, we should not have made any changes. And I, I don't know. So let me know in the comments section if you think I'm overreacting or not. I really think Thiago Silva could have started or could have had some sort of feature in this game. I'm not hearing that he's 36 excuse as an argument. Point number four, and I, I want to talk about our mentality because low-key, I do think we're starting to develop a bottle job mentality that we need to clear out of this club ASAP. It's becoming another pattern that we get ourselves into a solid winning position and we can't maintain it and we just struggle to kill teams off. We start games well, but this inability to kill a team off keeps biting us in the arse and more stats come in your way. In the last 14 months, we've dropped 20 points from winning positions with 11 points lost from goal after 80 minutes. Games like West Ham away last season, Arsenal with the 2-2 draw last season that they love chatting about, Newcastle away when we conceded in the 94th minute, Bournemouth home and away, thank god they're relegated, Brighton away as well and these are just the games where we drop points off, there's still other games where we still conceded goals around that period as well. We play like we're our own worst enemies sometimes and we need this change in mentality because all this is saying to me is that we get too complacent from a winning position. We get too comfortable, we let our mind slip and then an individual mistake happens and it lets the entire team down. This needs to be stamped out of our game because it's becoming too much of a pattern. My final point I'm going to go into, we're going to end it on a positive because this has probably been the most negative five reasons why I've ever done on this channel. Timo Werner. This guy just needed to be playing up front to be getting the best out of him. Timo Werner played up front for the first time since the opening day of the season. I know a lot of people are going to say he played up front against Liverpool as well, but for the most part, he was coming off the left-hand side, so I'm not counting that personally. And all the goals they scored were taken excellently. He looked back to his confident best. He looked back to being one of the best strikers in the world, and he took the Southampton defence for a mockery. That first goal, he left Bednarek in the absolute mud with that turn and nutmeg as well. And also had the composure to keep the ball while two, three, four Southampton players 
of blocking his path to goal until he could find the point to smash it into the bottom corner. It was an excellently taken first goal from him. The second goal as well. Brilliant pass from Jorginho. It was so beautiful. And then he went and took their goalkeeper for a training cone. Just dinked it over his head. And the beautifully timed header into the net as well. It was an excellent goal. And for Timo Werner, he's going to feel so let down by some of our defensive work. Because he had an amazing performance. He was our man of the match by a mile. It was glad. I'm so happy to see him up front. Because the last few games at left wing, he's just looked lost. He's looked more like he's just filling a position there and just making up space, but he didn't really have much impact there. And rival fans are using it to mock us, so I'm glad to see him playing up front now. Obviously, it's probably going to be where he's playing for the foreseeable future. Maybe not the best for Tammy because he knows he's not going to be seeing much more game time now, but we've been waiting to see Timo Werner play up front because we know what this guy can do. He was on smoke the entire match, and it's just a shame we didn't have the win to end it off. But guys... This is the end of five reasons why. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you agree with any of my decisions. And yeah, Sevilla and Manchester United next. Oh God, if we lose to Manchester United, do you know how vexed I'm going to be? This club is in a catastrophe. We can't let Ole get away with another victory against us. Swear down it can't happen. But guys, like, subscribe. I'm off. Peace.